Hi there, I'm Janet Lynn. And I'm Will Zeilinger. We are coming to you from Long Beach, California. We are a married couple who write together and separately. Between us, we have 15 books, and yes, we are still married. We also write under E.J. Williams for our new series, International Mysteries. Our first book, Stone Pub, will be released in 2021. As published authors, we have spoken at several venues, such as BoucherCon, Left Coast Crime, L.A. Lit Crawl, West Hollywood Book Fair, Santa Monica Public Library, American Association of University Women, Glendale Public Library, and California Writers Club, Orange County. We've met so many authors over the years, and with the advent of Zoom, we thought we'd chat with authors that we know and love. Today we have Faraday Bougeron. She is the author of Pomegranates and Saffron, A Culinary Journey to Azerbaijan. Broadly featured in media, her first U.S. public published Azerbaijan cookbook has won five prestigious awards, five, including Gourmand Best in the World. She lives with her husband and two children in the Los Angeles area. Welcome. Five awards, my goodness. How about that? I've never met a cookbook author before. You're my first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Is this, is this your first cookbook that you've written? Yes, this was my uh, very first cookbook. I was going to ask you, how, how did you decide to write a cookbook? Um, it happened in 2007. Just an idea struck me. I said, I'm going to write a cookbook on Azerbaijani cuisine because there was none published in English in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Published in the U.S. So I said, let me be the one who can write it, who writes it. So. I just came up with this crazy idea and decided to just follow through and do it. But there is, of course, history to it, why I decided to start it. Uh, I moved here to Southern California in 2002, newly married, and uh, I craved homemade foods because back in Azerbaijan, I rarely cooked. The cooking was done by my mom. Uh, and we moved here, we wanted to eat homemade food. So I started to teach myself how to cook because back there, uh, I knew a couple of things, but I couldn't, I can't say that I was really good in cooking. Um, I started to learn how to cook. I would call my mom, my sister, get the recipes, experiment. And also I liked to check out cookbooks, uh, cook, international cookbooks from uh, local libraries. Mm -hmm. I also liked to go to the bookstores and just uh, look at the ethnic or international cookbooks because I, I just loved looking at, I'm just leafing through those books, learning not only how to cook, but also learning about those cultures, it really fascinated me. So um, years passed and then eventually the idea struck me, how about I write a book myself because there was none on any shelves in the libraries or in bookstores. There was no book on Azerbaijani cuisine. So that's how idea came. That's I've, I've always read that culture and cuisine are intertwined. You can't really learn about one without learning about yeah. the other. Absolutely, I agree, I agree because um, the food of any country is its history, its, its ethnography, it's, uh, it's everything. It's folklore, it's um, all the elements that make the culture. So once you know the cuisine, you actually get to know the culture too. What, what was the one, the one Azerbaijani dish that you couldn't find anywhere? That I couldn't find anywhere? It wasn't similar like the, you know, is Lebanese, Israeli, Georgian, Armenian, the, what, what's, Uniquely Azerbaijani. Um, uniquely Azerbaijani. To say that, I have to, uh, you know, I have to really be, I have to be really knowledgeable about the foods of the world, <laughs> like all the foods. So I can't really claim what's 
I meant for you. <laughs> yes, for me, for example, our uh, breads are really interesting. Uh, spiced breads, flaky, multi-layered. We really have a thing for making breads that require a lot of labor. Uh, thinly, 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 thinly uh, rolled out dough, like multiple layers, uh, buttered, spiced. I think it's it's uniquely Azerbaijani thing. And also we have a lot of pasta dishes, uh, noodles and dumplings that are really uh, very interesting, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, desserts, I, I mean, you may have, for example, dolma in other cultures, but but uh, our dolma is a little different, so it makes it unique, <laughs> uniquely Azerbaijani. The yeah. ingredients we use or the way we wrap them, all of these uh, things uh, make dolma, let's say. Uh, I'm ha my mother was Italian, and when you mention pasta, I, <laughs> my ears always perk up. So what was the prop? How did you prepare for this book? What was the process? The process was, uh, first of all, I worked uh, on this book for seven years. <gasps> seven wow. years? Yes. That's from the inception of idea all the way to seeing the book actually come off the press. Mm -hmm. So when the idea was born, my mom was here visiting from Baku. And I said, mom, I have this crazy idea. I want to write this cookbook. So I sat down with her and she gave me all the recipes that she knew. So I wrote them down. Then she left, of course, she was here for a couple of months. And then I started uh, to call my friends, my relatives in Azerbaijan, asking their friends and friends and friends and relatives to share uh, recipes with me. And also every time I traveled to Azerbaijan, I tried to go to different regions and collect the recipes myself by speaking to people, by actually seeing how they're made. So that was the process of gathering the recipes. And then of course there was a testing part, writing part, testing part, photographing part, because I was my own photographer. And, um, oh, it's and great then, photography, a wonderful photography. It's in your beautiful book. stuff. I mean, Thank really you so much. <laughs> there is always room for improvement, but for that time, I had to be resourceful because it's a self published book. Uh -huh. So, um, the reason it took me seven years to write this book and also, um, yes, to write this book and complete it is because I was not familiar with US cookbook publishing industry. I just had an idea and that's it. So along with writing the book, I had to research how actually the publishing industry works in the US. Mm -hmm. um, so every page in that book, even the copyright page is an acquired knowledge, is something that I had to learn how to do. Mm -hmm. That's why it took me seven years because people ask me why so long? Because I was doing, I had to do everything on my own. So publishing is not easy, but uh, well. it's very rewarding, yes. Yeah, did you make all the dishes that they photographed? Yes, I did. I oh, did. that's I a did. lot of food. But you're still skinny. Yeah, <laughs> as of recently, I've been <laughs> trying to lose weight. But yes, I, I, I had to cook in order to test as well, because I, I, I needed to make sure that the recipes work. I had to come up with substitutes because some ingredients were not common here. So all of these things had to be taken into consideration. So I had to cook. Uh, which was not bad. We cooked and ate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for those who don't know, they're, they're watching this for the first time. Could you describe where Azerbaijan is for them? Where Azerbaijan is? Oh, okay. Azerbaijan is considered Eastern European country. It's uh, bordering Turkey, Iran, Russia, the Republic of Georgia, Armenia. And it's bound by the Caspian Sea. That's where Baku, the capital, is located. And when a lot of people don't, can't picture the place geographically, I tell them it's one of the ex-USSR countries. That's when it makes it easy for people to know. But it's now independent as of 1991. And yes. And you said you traveled there several times. Is it difficult to travel within Azerbaijan or travel to Azerbaijan? No, there is no difficulty at all. There are flights there. So Good. my family lives there. Everybody's there. It's just me, my husband, kids and dogs here. Everybody else is, um, is in Azerbaijan and my husband's family is in Turkey. So we travel there um, in the summers usually. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not uh, difficult to travel within Azerbaijan. It's a small country uh, and no problems at all. It's fun. What, which, ingredients, uh, which, uh, which ingredients were the hardest to find or you had to substitute? Uh, some of the ingredients, for example, um, very regional, local ingredients, wild herbs, 
oh, wow. that are really indigenous to the forests uh, mm -hmm. in the countryside, in Azerbaijani countryside. So you can't replicate those. But then I had to come up with some substitutes, like for example, wild wild sorrel, um, some other herbs that I can't think of right now. But there's a lot of um, local wild herbs that are used to make uh, flatbreads, uh, to put mm -hmm. into soups, uh, stews. So herbs are really important in our culture. So those were was probably the hardest. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, and it's easy to replicate Azerbaijani dishes here. Is it? I have to ask you, I'm, I have a sweet tooth. Uh, what's your favorite dessert in your uh, cookbook? Uh, favorite dessert? The thing is, I don't have a sweet tooth. Oh, I do. <laughs> yes, uh, I like savory things a lot, breads a lot. Uh, right now I'm trying to cut down on all of those, but um, in terms of what I like, um, I would say I like badambura. It's a pastry that's multi-layered. I can show you the picture. I don't know if it will look properly there, but it's a multi-layered pastry that's filled with nuts. And it looks so beautiful. Um, because I don't have a sweet tooth, I just like to look at it. <laughs> but I, uh, oh, so oh my goodness, look at that. It looks very good. Oh my goodness. I like that. And could you show us the cover of your book as well? Uh, yes, this is the cover of the book. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, sorry, it just makes me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It does make me yeah. hungry. Too. Now, as a child, living in Turkey as a child, my many of my memories are those memories of the food. You know, things like basturma, which you, it's hard to find, and uh, things like that. Like I said, some of them are similar, but they're not quite the same. And I'm sure that Azerbaijani is, is, has its own variation as well. Mm -hmm. So what did you learn doing this cookbook? What was... Uh, what, what how did it change your life? How it changed my life? Um, the biggest reward that I received for writing this book is I met so many interesting people, actually, including you. <laughs> <laughs> if not for this book, I really would not know so many people that I know now uh, from different parts of the world. It's Azerbaijanis who live in other countries. It's people who like other cultures and foods. They just connect with me through this book. So it's 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 really uh, amazing what a book can do. Can do. That's something mm -hmm. that I never thought of when I was writing it. But um, I don't know if I answered your question right, but that's uh, probably the most, uh, the biggest reward that I received. In that. Okay. What have you learned specifically? What have you learned putting the cookbook together? Oh, okay, specifically um, that it's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> that there is a lot more involved uh, that you think there will be because when I was starting I said okay in one or two years the book will be ready but no it's just there's so much work uh, involved in just writing the book and the book that I wrote um, it's not I, I didn't want it to be a collection of recipes I wanted it to give a glimpse of the culture for someone who's not familiar with it so when you read a recipe is a head note that tells you um, where it comes from and why it was used or what season it's used. So it gives you a glimpse of the culture. Um, so it took a lot of time researching into that too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I learned that a lot of research goes into writing any book. Well, I can't speak about other books because I haven't written any, but uh, in terms of cookbook, yes, a lot of research goes into it. Well, as a graphic designer, it's a beautiful book. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank it really you. It was very, design. very nicely done. Very beautiful. She did uh, did, you, job. Yeah. did you find there were some recipes uh, that you did that you, after you cooked things that, no, I'm not going to put that one in? Now I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure there were some recipes. <laughs> probably it's not very fit for a Western palate. Uh, I'm pretty sure there were some recipes. I can't remember off the top of my head, but there were. Really? So would you say you had too many to put in or not enough in, to put in? <laughs> oh, I had so many recipes. And then uh, my, uh, my editor said that this book is going to be humongous. So we have to cut down <laughs> on some of the recipes. So I was like, no, let's put this, let's put that. This is good, this is delicious. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to put everything there. Uh -huh. uh, but yes, we have to cut down a lot of recipes. So I have, I have recipes that I haven't used in the first book. So hopefully they'll go in the next book. Uh -huh. Have you had anyone say, no, 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 that's not the way you make it. This is the way my mother made it. Um, <laughs> not really, not really. Um, this, I mean, who can say it? Only Azerbaijanis if they're fam who are familiar with the food, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, generally speaking, everybody was so welcoming. They really appreciate oh, that true. I did something uh, for the country. Um, so no, all the, posi all the positive reviews. 
<laughs> good. That's good. I was just wondering because sometimes we go to our local farmers market. And here in Long Beach, we have a large Asian community. Yeah. And uh, Janet would sometimes pick something up and ask the vendor, what is this? And how do you four or it? five women would come over and say, oh, and they'd like all tell her how to <laughs> <laughs> like this and said, how, what to do with it. You know, like uh, bitter melon. I didn't know what to do with a bitter melon. But we, had, yeah. we made a pact that every week we try something different. And buy something we don't recognize. And I cook it the way they would tell me. And it was great. The thing is, is that because it, we have so many Asians here, and this was an Asian stall. I'd be, you know, towering over all these ladies oh, who are Asian. Like, you know, to here. Come up to my armpits, you know, <laughs> where they'd stare up at me. Oh, what are you doing here? Because <laughs> I didn't look like them. But they were all so very sweet and so very kind. And I come back and they'd ask me how it worked out. And so I it, that expanded my cookbook <laughs> or my recipe book. Oh, she now has two boxes of recipes. Yeah, one for yeah, one for different things. <laughs> like you said, like Janet said, when we first got married, she didn't think she knew how to cook. I didn't. I did not know how to. She cook. knew how to cook. <laughs> yeah, I get up in cans of soup and mix it with something else, but that was it. And what happened was he did most of the cooking. And what's interesting is we had someone over for Thanksgiving, and I had dropped something, and so I get got the the vacuum out to clean it. I had no idea how to run my vacuum cleaner because I have a housekeeper. You know, here we are, two college-educated people. Couldn't figure out how to do this. Uh, so it was really well, She didn't even know where the vacuum cleaner was. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it was about 15 years ago. I said, that's it. I'm the lady of the house. I should know where this stuff is and how it works. So it wasn't the cookbooks. You know, that was really nice. I think that also the idea of putting information about your culture I think that's fascinating. I like books that tell me why the book, the, the recipe is there. Mm -hmm. Did your mom help you? Uh, she helped me with the recipes. She shared the recipes that she knew. And also uh, when I was in Baku at one point, um, I was doing photography for some of the dishes. So we made the dishes together or she made the dishes and I photographed them. So she did help. Oh, lot. good. That's good. So what are the challenges of photographing the food? Oh, gosh, that's probably one of the most challenging part of, of my book uh, writing process, uh, because I didn't know how to photograph food. So I would take I still I'm still not an expert by all means. But um, mm -hmm. back then, I just I would style the dish and take about 500 photographs of each dish and then choose one because I really didn't know <laughs> how to <laughs> make good pictures. But eventually one of them would come out nice. So I would use that picture in the book. Um, but so it was it was a challenge my camera was just a very uh, basic entry-level camera so mm -hmm. I had to be resourceful it was it was just a very big learning curve for me mm -hmm. now how long did it take you to uh, work with the photographer to get all the pictures right well, she, uh, she did a lot of the photography yes I did, oh, you did. Most of the pictures, maybe 98, 99%. The cover picture is not mine. I cooked it and my, a friend of mine came over and we styled it. Mm -hmm. And then I had a professional photographer come and take the picture. Oh, okay. Because the cover and my camera was not <laughs> that purpose. So that is made by the professional photographer. And inside the book, there are a couple of, uh, about maybe 15, 20 pictures or 10, I don't know. But a few pictures that are made by other people, mostly my friends. Mm -hmm. there are for certain things like nature or some of the dishes that mm -hmm. their pictures were better than mine so uh, mm -hmm. they were really generous in sharing them with me well that's wonderful so what's next for you what are your plans more cookbooks more cookbooks uh, yes i'm currently working on my cook num cookbook number two it's uh, also on azerbaijan um uh, more regional recipes so there is uh, so people get mm -hmm. a big bigger picture of regional cuisine, Azerbaijani regional cuisine. So it's, it's a work in progress. I'm right now, I'm collecting the recipes or working on the recipes that, that I collected during my travels there and writing them. And then the testing, retesting and all those things. But hopefully I'll have a publisher this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you have a good track record now. Yeah, you've got a track record now, so it'd be a lot easier. And what else are you doing? Uh, what else I am doing? This book actually uh, led me to uh, start doing culinary and cultural tours in the Caucasus, in Azerbaijan specifically, and also in the neighboring uh, Republic of Georgia, because it's also part of the Caucasus. And um, so in 2017, 
this crazy idea came to me. Oh, this idea is usually crazy. Um, they, it just came to me and uh, to lead a culinary tour to Azerbaijan. And I just sat down and started to write an itinerary the way I envisioned it. It had to be something that would take people off the beaten path, uh, take them into remote villages, really get them engaged with people and witness their lifestyle and all that. Mm -hmm. So, and my first tour happened in 2018 in the summer. Then I decided to do more. And in 2019, I had more tours. And then in 2020, COVID-19, so there is, uh, unfortunately, I had to cancel my, uh, my tours for this year, but I'm hopeful. And I really like this project because it has a big social impact, which is very important for me. Um, you know, we, we go to remote places. We, um, we don't dine in fancy restaurants, usually in the countryside. We just go to people's homes and cook with them, eat with them. Uh, we try to understand each other. We, you know, we want them to make money and not big places. Um, so this is a really a, a very interesting project to me. Um, and I want to continue doing this. Are there a lot of different uh, dialects in Azerbaijan? Uh, the language, the official language is Azerbaijani, which can be also called Azerbaijani Turkish. It's a Turkic language. I noticed uh, it's similar. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's similar. But also, we have a lot of ethnic groups, ethnic minorities living in Azerbaijan. We mm -hmm. have, uh, they, and they, they all speak their own language, plus the, uh, the state language of the country. So, um, it, and it's, it's really fascinating. On my tours, we go to different villages, and they're maybe 10, 15 minutes away from each other, but then people speak different mm -hmm. languages, and, and it's just so fascinating. And also, their cuisine is different, their culture is a little bit different. So, yes. Lots of languages there. So, <laughs> so you were you were born in Azerbaijan. Yes, I was born and in Azerbaijan. How old were you when you when you came to the United States? You were already an adult. Uh, yes, I came here first when I was single. It was two thousand. I was 23, 22, 23. and uh, I worked for a magazine called Azerbaijan International that had oh, cool. uh, office in Baku. It was an English language publication and headquarters in Los Angeles. So I came. I was sent here for a training. Uh, so I stayed here for a year and then I went back and then I came back after marrying. So first time I came here as a, yes, a 23 year old. Uh, uh, my goodness. Well, well, <laughs> so, well, when I think of Baku and I think of the Caspian, I think of caviar. Yeah. Oh yes, you're right. We have the best caviar, yes. <laughs> That's true. Tasting of caviar in Baku. <laughs> when I, was, I, I worked in Russia for a while, I think 1990. 94, 96, 94, 96, all the caviar there. And they had so many different kinds of caviar. Here we have very from. few, but oh my goodness, I'd never taste the delici delicious caviar as I did there. Probably came from there. Now tell me, <laughs> going back to your tours, how many tours do you do a year? Um, the first year I did uh, one big tour and then I had uh, a few private tours. Um, mm -hmm. The, the group tours I lead myself, and there are also private tours that I sometimes lead myself or have local guides uh, do that. Um, and the second year I did, in 2019, I, hit, I did two group tours and a couple of uh, private tours. So it's not that many a year yet, but I hope to grow it and offer artisan tours, uh, plus food tours. I want to show not only the food, but also everything else, which we already do in my food and culture tour. There's music, there's folk, you know, there's arts, crafts, dances. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's 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 a, a lot of different things at the same time. But yes, in the future after Corona, I hope to do more tours. Are they small groups? Yes, they're always small group. Uh, you know, I usually say that I can't take more than twelve, and so far it's it's usually eight people, nine people, seven people. So. So far, we haven't even had twelve people. But well, I think small groups. I think small groups are nicer because you got oh. too many people. It's just you got to wait to get on the bus. You got to wait for this and wait for that. So we always yeah. do the small troop uh, tours when we travel. It's mm -hmm. just so much nicer. I agree. I agree. It's more personal, and we become friends. It's like a family traveling together. So yeah. yes. So yeah. tell us a little bit about where can people find your book. The book is currently sold out, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know, but um, I'm going to have an ebook possibly. Oh, okay. Because uh, I'm, I'm considering to go into reprint, but I don't know if I should at this point. So maybe. I was going to ask, yeah, if you're going to do a second yeah. printing. 
um, maybe uh, I'm not sure. So I'm thinking about ebook. Of course, I, I like to have. I'm just old fashioned. I like uh, hard copies. <laughs> not mm -hmm. a person, but uh, if it doesn't work, we'll. Just well, we know on. lots of people who collect cookbooks. Mm -hmm. you know, they like cookbooks do. from all over the world. Right, the, the hard. Hard, the hard, ones. hard copy, right? Yes. Ideally, that would be idea. That would be great if I can do that. But if not, I'll consider ebook. So, but currently it's sold out. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Well, gee, it was maybe great. you can find one on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised. Our Amazon. books are on eBay. I mean, you couldn't believe it. I mean, not eBay, but yeah, Amazon. Amazon and, but on eBay, and we don't know. How used. <laughs> I oh, yeah. had no idea. We hope they read it. Hope they like it. <laughs> Somebody is selling my book actually on Amazon. I think it's for three hundred and something dollars, and people email me asking, oh. "Are you selling that book for that price?" I'm like, "That's not me. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that." It's, it's yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Well, listen. Well, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. No, so I was I was saying that uh, yesterday or the day before, I was looking at your tour website. And it's a beautiful website. I mean, it's very wow. inviting. I think it's going to be very successful, continue to be successful for you. I thought it was really pretty. I mean, Thank visually, you. it was lovely, and it seems to have a lot of depth to it. Thank you. Very That's colorful, wonderful. too. Yeah. Well, it was nice talking with you, Purity. It's been a Thank long you. time since we've seen you. Uh, good luck with your book, and we'll be putting it up on Chatting with Authors, and we'll put your website up as well. Thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, so at the end of this promotion, your website will be on there. Okay. All right. Okay. So Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time on Chatting with Authors. Be sure to push the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. Stay safe, everybody. Mm -hmm.